All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm very excited to, to welcome you to our event, Sync on Environments. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dan Garfield. I'm the uh, Chief Open Source Officer and Co-Founder of this wonderful company we call CodeFresh. Um, we've got a wonderful presentation for you today. The team has been working very hard on building some really amazing features and tools and uh, really extending the platform. And so uh, very excited to share that with you. Um, for those of you that are just, maybe you're tuning in for the first time, maybe you haven't used CodeFresh. Uh, I know a, little, a lot of you are new to uh, the platform. You maybe you've just heard of us. Um, let me give you just like the brief of it, briefest of introduction to CodeFresh. And then we're gonna get into uh, what we're announcing today with environments and doing some demos and then we'll have some customer Q and A. Um, now, as we go throughout this, actually, as we go throughout this, please use the chat, shout out questions. There's a Q&A, uh, so you can put your questions in the Q&A, and we can answer those through the chat um, or live on video. And we've got uh, the, cus the Code Fresh customer success team and um, uh, Taylor and Francisco and all those folks and, and Dustin from our sales team. They're all on the chat and, and uh, looking to answer questions and keeping up with whatever, whatever you might have. Um, I see people joining from all over the world, from Sao Paulo, from Chicago, from Washington, from Ireland, from UK. So really great to have all of you. And I know some of you are joining it uh, later in your evening. So hopefully it's a nice time. Maybe grab a beer for those of us that are joining the, in, the, in the Pacific. I hope you got your coffee and you're ready to go. So um, with that, let me introduce CodeFresh very briefly. So for those of you that um, aren't familiar with CodeFresh, CodeFresh really brings the entire software delivery lifecycle together. So that means we're going to integrate with whatever cloud provider you're using, whatever on-prem provider. If you're deploying uh, on-prem, if you're deploying on the cloud, if you're deploying wherever you're deploying, we're going to integrate with that. We're going to integrate with whatever Git provider you're using. Um, we're going to integrate with whatever uh, source code management provider you're using. Um, we have, uh, you know, support for things that aren't Git. You know, if you're using Garrett, you can use Garrett with CodeFresh. Um, we're going to integrate with whatever ticketing systems you have. And the whole point is to make it so your software delivery flow is simple and easy and managed in a fantastic flow. So whatever test tool you're using, whatever uh, registries you're using, secrets providers, all those things are gonna integrate into CodeFresh to provide a single software delivery flow. So we've provided the CI CD, we've got the pipelines built in, we've got the GitOps built in. So you can define your source of truth and start deploying. You can get real time insights about what's happening. And the goal of this ultimately is to make all of this information be exposed within a single view. So, uh, so that your software is easier to manage. So many of you are already familiar with the concept of a release timeline. We show you a whole timeline of changes that are happening to your systems, what's happening when we correlate those with your Git commits, with the pull requests, with the Jira issues. Uh, we keep track of all the uh, artifacts that are changing. Um, and then we also do support progressive delivery. So you can handle your canary releases, your blue green deployments, your health checks, all this stuff is built into CodeFresh. We have a unique deployment model. So uh, I know a lot of you are familiar with it. A lot of you are using it. A lot of you love it. It's making your teams more productive. Your uh, engineering managers are happier because the software delivery flow is simpler to view for them. They can tell what's going on. They can tell how productive the teams are. Your developers are happier. They can tell when stuff has been deployed. They can see when other things are maybe uh, have been deployed along with their changes and they can see what those are um, and then get a full diff view of all those things. So uh, really supercharging the, the development lifecycle, making you more productive. That's what CodeFresh is. And if um, that, that ultimately means that instead of jumping around between lots of different tools, you have a single tool that shows everything together. Uh, and it just makes you more productive. So that's that's at the heart of what CodeFresh is doing. And we're also leading the way in GitOps. Um, so for those that haven't done the certification yet already, we offer currently two levels of certification with a third on the way. We have over 20,000 students. It's the most popular, most uh, productive, most uh, fastest growing uh, GitOps certification in the world. You can find the information at learning.codefresh.io for this event only. We're offering 40% off using the code SYNC on EVS. 
um, there and uh, that does expire and it will run out. So uh, if it doesn't work for you, you may have just been too slow if you haven't already done the certification. And I see some people posting saying, hey, I'm, I'm already waiting for the third certification. We're excited for that. But all of that is just a preamble because today we're going to be showing off how you can deploy easy using some really cool new features from CodeFresh, the ability to manage environments. So uh, here I want to introduce um, our two presenters, uh, Idan, who is our senior product manager and head of UX. He's been with us um, really pretty much since the beginning of CodeFresh and especially in the last year or two has really taken on a lot of product and helping build all of the GitOps tooling that you love. And of course, Costas, for those of you who don't know Costas, uh, he built our GitOps certification. And um, many of you have relied on his articles and his um, guidance uh, to help you be productive with your GitOps tooling using Argo, using CICD, whatever it may be. So let me um, let me introduce these two speakers and I'll pass it off to you, Costas, to introduce what we're gonna be showing off today. Uh, thank you, Dan. So I have to say, I'm really excited about this. It's a feature we have been working for over, I think, uh, a year now. Uh, if you're familiar with Argo CD, you know, after you finish with the initial installation and you have all the, you solve all the issues on how you install it and how you manage it, usually the first question that people ask is, how do I promote between environments and how do I manage my environments? And until recently, there wasn't any, let's say, good guide or good practice regarding this. So we wrote a very popular article uh, last year in 2022, and this was great. But uh, finally, you have uh, the capability to use this as a product. So you know, just not just advice, but something you can take out of the box um, and use right away. So let's explain first what is the problem that we're solving. Um, if you look at Argo CD, an Argo CD application, like the resource Argo CD introduces, is very simple. It is just a link between uh, a Git repository and a cluster. That's it. The application has many options, but all the options essentially control this link. They don't do anything else. They just say how you get your stuff from Git and put it in the cluster. Okay, that's that's great. But uh, maybe your cluster is a production environment, or maybe it's a non-production environment. Does uh, Argo CD know about this? No, it doesn't. Um, and let's say you want to deploy many applications, like not just one, and you want to define some kind of ordering. How do you do this with Argo CD? This is another very popular question, how you do application ordering. And right now, there isn't the perfect answer yet. Um, for those of you that are working with microservices, maybe you don't want to deploy um, one application, you want to deploy uh, many microservices, and you want to see the connection between them, like either treat them as a single unit or just a single entity. How you can do this with uh, Argo CD? There are some solutions like architect um, application sets, but these are mostly um, handling the build time, like the, the pre-deployment um, workflow. They don't necessarily translate into uh, runtime information. Uh, so essentially, in conclusion, for Argo CD, everything is an application. This is you know, good because it's very simple and you understand how to use uh, Argo CD, but it's also not very flexible. Usually in a company, you have different kinds um, of applications. And then even after you define your applications and all your, um, uh, let's say, microservices, as I said, the first question is, how do I promote? What do I promote? This is the most popular question ever. And Argo City doesn't have an answer right now. It's up to you to define what you mean by promotion and, and how you do it. With Argo CD, you just get the low level uh, sync engine. And I, I want to be clear and say that, you know, we love Argo CD, we maintain uh, Argo CD, uh, we write documentation for Argo CD, so I'm not, you know, against Argo CD, but we always want to to improve and help people build something on top and get um, what they want. So this is what you get with Argo CD out of the box: a great way to have a GitOps application that only says take some files from Git and put them uh, in a cluster. And if you have uh, worked with Argo CD, this screen should be very familiar um, to you. You just have a flat list of applications, nothing else. You just see a flat list of applications, and then it's up to you to define exactly what is an environment or how you do promotions. So here I have done a very simple example where I'm saying uh, I have chosen a naming convention, and um, I have an application called building, billing, and before the name, I'm naming also the environment. 
So it's staging and three environments for three teams. But this is just a convention I chose in my own company. And you can imagine if it's you know string based and I'm just looking at the name, this is not something that is production ready or very stable. And then you will move to another company and they will have a different naming pattern. So everything that you have used um, will not apply here anymore. So Argo CD doesn't have any concept of environments or uh, application groupings or uh, promotions uh, at all. And you can even see, uh, you know, in, in a company, you can listen to all these discussions and usually nobody is talking really about the low level process. Everybody is talking about high level constructs. So maybe you are an operator and you are handling Argo CD and you have a developer and they come to you and say, hey, I want to promote three microservices, my users, my payments and my orders because they form a single entity. It's my billing product and I want to promote them from QA to production. What do I do? This is a question you get. And you can see that in this English sentence that Argo CD only knows one word. It understands what is the, the application, but it doesn't know that this application is part uh, of, let's say, a whole product and it also has related microservices and it doesn't know what is a product and it doesn't know how you promote from QA to production. And this is where CodeFresh comes in. So with CodeFresh, we enhance, let's say, this uh, capability and we try to make uh, everything map directly to, to a construct, in this case, to a CodeFresh contract. So Argo CD understands one word, CodeFresh understands uh, the whole sentence. So how does it work? Uh, essentially, we introduce two new entities, a CodeFresh environments uh, and products, and this is how you should organize your uh, clusters. So here I have an example. You have, as I said, um, a flat list of applications. Maybe it's a single uh, Argo CD instance. Maybe it's many Argo CD instances. It doesn't really matter right now, right now, it's just a flat list. You can see there is this naming convention uh, I talked about, but this is just for names. So the first thing you should do is say, okay, and I will show you the way. Uh, these are not you know, just applications on uh, random clusters. These clusters represent environments. And not only they represent environments, but they have four environments, development, testing, pre prod and prod. So that's step number one. The second step is as you say, okay, I don't have just four environments. But these environments have an order. So I'm not you know, deploying straight to production. Ideally, I should deploy first to dev, and then I promote my application and it goes to test, and then I promote my application and it goes to prod, and finally to prod. So not only I have defined four environments, I've also defined an order in these four uh, environments. And finally, there is a second dimension, the product that we talked about, which uh, unifies um, the individual applications. So here, monitor dev, monitor test, and monitor prod is not just some random four applications. I want to know that the, it is the exact same application, but it's just promoted from environment to, to environment. So if you ask Argo CD, it will tell you it's just four applications. But if you ask CodeFresh, CodeFresh will say, no, it's a single application. It's, you have just deployed it in your four uh, environments. So that's like the theory of how you should organize uh, your applications and add extra intelligence um, in this huge list that Argo CD offers um, out of the box. Okay, so that's uh, enough theory. How does it work? This is what everybody expects. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time ever, you see our brand new uh, environments dashboard, which brings into a single screen everything that we have uh, talked together. Maybe you have seen some similar dashboards in other products, but this is the first ever dashboard specifically for GitOps applications. So it's not, you know, for that's any applications, but for GitOps applications, everything you see is powered by Argo CD. Argo CD is behind the scenes. And uh, this is the, the new uh, UI. And you can see like what you would expect as a developer. I have three environments um, and they go from left to right. So there is a very clear order again for environments. And you can see some applications there and also what is their uh, version. And also you have some applications that are not assigned yet to, to a specific um, product. Uh, so this is uh, what we're going to do. And to make this work, we introduce some concepts. So we say, okay, CodeFresh introduces a new concept for environment. What is an environment? If you ask a hundred people, you will get a hundred different answers. So here we have an opinionated way and say an environment in our case is either a cluster on its own or some namespaces on the cluster or multiple clusters or multiple namespaces. That's uh, the definition. And you can see that it's flexible enough to cover 
every use case um, for every customer. Uh, an environment can exist on its own. So maybe, you know, you have defined an environment, say it's a cluster and nothing is deployed there yet. That's perfectly fine for CodeFest. Unlike, you know, some other products that they say, no, you always need to deploy an environment. And then after we define the environment, we define a product, which is another new construct that uh, CodeFest introduces, which is uh, a way to unify some Argo CD applications. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two, maybe three. It's some applications you, have to th you think are uh, interrelated. Maybe you want to deploy them together. Maybe you don't want to de deploy them together, but usually you want to promote them together or at least know that they are related during the promotion phase. So we have these two basic contracts, an environment and a product. And then we also define the connection between them and say this product is deployed to that environment or to another environment. And we do this with CodeFest in a very flexible way. And then CodeFest does all the hard work of showing this nice dashboard and making it easy to understand like what is deployed where and how the applications are um, interconnected. And I know that just you know, by this discussion, you will have a thousand questions and we'll try to, to answer them uh, in the chat. Uh, if you have read the previous you know, article about how to promote, you will see some similarities there. And as I said, you know, essentially we created um, something that was just a best practice. Now it's a product that you can try and use uh, on your own. So initially this presentation was only to going to be slides, but we said, no, since we have live people here, let's show them something. So ahead of KubeCon, normally this would be just a demo that we would do at uh, KubeCon. You will see a um, live demo of what we have right now. So this is not a mock-up anymore. This is actually CodeFresh, like uh, our demo uh, instance. I'm at the environment screen. And as I said, we will uh, see what you should do uh, as you want to, to create environments and applications. So here I have some predefined environments that you can uh, see, and we will see one as a demo. But if you want to create a brand new one, we say create an environment. And here you can just put uh, a name. And then you can also put uh, a kind. Now, for now, we only have uh, two kinds, non production and production. And you can imagine why this is useful, because later you can say, for example, ah, this is a production environment. Whenever a promotion happens, I always want to create a pull request. Nothing should go in production as it is. Uh, but for a non-production environment, maybe I don't care. I don't need a pull request. So I will always um, commit something straight to, to the branch. So this is just a starting point. You know, Maybe we you want other environments or other types of environments. So we can do it. And the same thing can be said for uh, tags, how you, sort, how you sort them and how you use them. So this is the important part where we define what is an environment. And you can see uh, it follows the description uh, I told you. So here I've already connected some clusters into CodeFresh and I can select any one of those clusters. So maybe I want to create a production environment and I choose my production instance. And then here for namespaces, either I can put some uh, default namespace or I can put uh, a specific namespace or a multiple namespace or even uh, use the star and add all namespaces if this is got what I want. And then after I finish, maybe I want to add another cluster. So here you have a choice. Let's say you have three clusters, uh, one in Europe, one in Asia, and uh, two in the US. And maybe for some of you, uh, you prefer to say that, hey, each one is an environment. So I have an environment for Asia, an environment for uh, Europe, and an environment for US. Or you might say that I want to group the two US environments and create a single, the two US clusters and create a single environment. You can do it. So I think with this pattern, uh, CodeFresh will match exactly your existing workflow and you will not need to change um, anything at all. Uh, so I created my environment. The environment is now ready. Uh, maybe there is an application there. Maybe there isn't. It doesn't really uh, matter. What I'm going to do next is go to my product screen. And here I'm going to do the same thing, another brand new product. So maybe I'm uh, creating my... Um, payments application, which itself is uh, maybe three or four Argo CD applications. So how do I group those applications? Uh, here we made the natural choice in order to be you know, Kubernetes native. You just need to add an annotation and say that this Argo CD application belongs to this product. So here it auto suggests you and say you should add uh, payments. Uh, remember that everything I'm showing you uh, behind the scenes will be committed to Git and stored in Git. It's not something you do in the UI. 
Uh, but here, you know, it helps you if you want to do it manually, you can do it. And if for some reason you don't like this annotation, you can add your custom option and say, maybe my company already has an annotation, which is called mycompany.com uh, microservice or something or service better. So even if you already have something in this in your organization, CodePress is smart enough um, to understand it and to, to make this correlation. So now we have the most uh, important building blocks. We have applications and we have environments and then CodePress will do its uh, uh, magic and assign everything according to the um, um, to their location. So here I've selected uh, one application that is already there. It's already in three um, environments and CodePress knows exactly this relationship that I talked about. So it knows where it's deployed. And here I think we reach the most important point if you are in the killer feature of CodePress. Normally, you don't just want to see some environments. That's okay, but this is not very useful. Normally, you want to answer questions about environments. So here I have the classic view where you can see um, which images uh, are there and which version is there. But if you look at the top right, you can see I can change the view and also so uh, Git information. And remember, this is feature Git information. So instantly, I can answer some very common questions about environments, which are, who was the last person that touched this environment? What was the last change that uh, affected this environment? Or what a, let's say, project manager would ask regarding features. So here you can see our Jira integration. These are Jira tickets. So you can see which feature is in this environment. I think this is one of the most important uh, things that you will see today uh, because this is another very popular question. People asking, you know, developers, hey, where is this feature? Is it in production yet? Is it in staging? Or what features do we have in staging And right now? And here you can answer it right away. You don't need you know, to go to two different three applications and first uh, visit uh, Jira and find the ticket, then visit uh, GitHub and find the hash, then go to your CD system and make the correlation. Here you can see it um, uh, right away. So this is something that is great for all stakeholders. You don't need to be a developer to get value out of this dashboard. You can be a project manager, a product owner, uh, an SRE, an operator, a department lead, everything should find something uh, that is useful. And I actually, challenge you as you see this, you know, to answer, to ask this question in your company, like ask what features are deployed um, in an environment, not what Git has is an environment. Everybody knows about Git hashes. And I'm sorry to tell you this, but nobody really cares about Git hashes. People care about environments. And I challenge you to say if you can find this with the two clicks that I did here and how much time um, you spent there. So uh, that's the preview. If you click on an application, um, you also get like a familiar view that you already know from uh, from CodeFresh, which is the the timeline where you, you know you can see a timeline of deployments, what was successful, what was not uh, successful, and uh, a timeline view of everything that was deployed. If you want to go further back uh, in the past, and then you can also click and go to the full view and dive into a specific uh, application and see even more uh, information and start searching more things. So you can see the dashboard as a starting point that first gives you the overview. And then you can you know, drill down and find specific information that you are uh, interested in. So that was the sneak peek. If you want to know more, you should either join us at the KubeCon or wait until KubeCon, where we will um, show even more. But I think it was important to show you something uh, today since you are here instead of showing um, boring slides. So what have we uh, seen? What is the end result? The end result is that even though you know Argo CD is a great tool, it's really a low level sync engine. It's great if you want to know the mechanics, like what is synced uh, where, but it doesn't have any information about high level overview, like environment information or uh, which application is deployed in this environment. With CodeFresh, you get this information. You get uh, an overview of your environments, not just the applications. You can understand how an application moves across environments. So this is a great way to help uh, developers because one of the most common questions of developers is, where is my release? Is my production uh, pipeline ready? W what has happened? So now you can help developers understand exactly how a commit starts you know, from Git and how it reaches its environment uh, in turn. 
as an operator, you also get a great overview for environments in general. So you can see, oh, maybe I have a no. 10 applications in staging and two applications in pre-prod. Maybe I need to adjust my resources in order to accommodate this. And the most interesting scenario for me, as I said, is that you also include other people, other non, let's say, developers and non-operators. So you can show the screen to your project manager and instead of having them asking you every day, hey, where is this feature? Where is this feature? Now you can say this feature is in staging and no, now today this feature um, is um, in production. And uh, you know, I've shown you the fancy UI today, but if you're familiar with CodeFresh, you know that we follow GitOps uh, with, with our hearts. So everything that you've seen is actually, you know, stored in Git. It's saved in Git, in Seek in Git. Essentially, every action that you take in CodeFresh, if you have seen how our uh, runtime works, uh, you click some buttons and then it says, hey, you need to commit your actions and you actually press a button uh, to commit. So don't you know think that this was just a fancy UI where things are stored somewhere? Uh, it's fully uh, GitOps. And with that, uh, I will pass this to uh, my colleague in Dan, and he will talk about some more features that we haven't seen. So actually, let's let's do a quick uh, wait. Back up one one slide. Let's do a quick check in because we've had a lot of questions. People are pretty engaged. So let's do a quick check in on some of these questions, and then. Um, I know we're going to answer some of them with some of the things that you're going to be showing as well, Dan. But one of the questions was, is there a GitOps declarative way of defining environments and products? What we showed was obviously the UI way. And Edan, I think there is through Terraform and, and some other ways, right? Exactly. So uh, since environments are essentially cross-cluster, cross Argo cd uh, entities, we thought it would be better to keep them as a, a code push entity and not on the cluster. But still, everything is available to in a declarative way to, via our Terraform provider. Products are actually uh, very easy. So we can generate them uh, via Terraform as well and via UI, but they are able to, to create them actually by just adding a simple annotation as close as showed on the application and CodeFish will identify that application, that annotation and create a product for them. So everything, uh, it, it, we're really looking to make it easier for all users in different levels and just to make sure the process is fast and engaging. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, another thing that uh, Luke Phillips was asking was, is everything that you were demo demoing, is all of that persisted in Git? And I know we're going to show that spec in a bit, but the answer is essentially yes. And Dan also sort of just answered that with some of the definitions of environments and products. And um, I think actually, Dan, in a few minutes, you're going to show us some of the commit uh, flows as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll maybe hang on to that one. Um, Danny asks or says, the killer feature for us is the awareness of failure and the ability to roll back to a last known good. Is this kind of use case handled? So, so as you can see here, each application actually shows you the health status of the application. And uh, I'll show in a bit, but as you can actually uh, promote from one version to another, you can always do the same operation in reverse and roll back if there's any issue. And you can identify the, the previous version that was in a different environment and roll back to that, or just do a git revert and simply roll back to the previous one. So since everything is in GitOps, rollbacks are super easy. Yeah, perfect, okay. Um, Luke also put out this question, microservices are loosely coupled services. This sort of appears to be a way to create a more tight coupling and creating potential unintentional complexities or slow down in rapid CD. So he's worried that um, the relationship between these applications might create that dependence. And I, I don't think that's the case here. No, so essentially you can uh, consider each product a specific microservices, microservice in different versions and different environments. So it, right now it's actually uh, not connected enough and not coupled enough in, for microservice architecture. We are building that additional level of aggregation of connectivity. But if, you, if you're familiar with CodeFresh, everything we do, and you'll see this later, uh, is with customization in mind and with different use cases in mind. So like Kosti uh, mentioned, if you ask something, what so 100 people, what environment, you'll get 100 answers. If you ask people how to uh, associate multiple microservices together, you'll also get 100 answers. So we are trying to uh, not be very uh, strict with this. We are opinionated and we have some best practices built into the platform, but everything should be customizable for your use case. Yeah, perfect. Okay. so. Um... Uh, we have a number of other questions, but I think you're actually going to answer a lot of them with with what you're about to present. So let's uh, let's let you go forward. Keep the questions coming, and we're gonna we're gonna circle back to them. So go ahead, Aidan. 
Amazing. Um, so thank you, Kostis. Kostis, can you? Yeah, you want to share your own screen? Yes, please. Uh, while Dan is sharing, I wanted to mention something regarding the, the microservices. The way we have shown is just an annotation. So right now you just add an annotation to three applications. And this, you know, says that these applications are interconnected. CodeFresh has some other ways, you know, to group applications, which are, let's say, even different if it's something that you want. I'm just saying that, you know, much flexibility. And I can bet that we will cover your use case and your explanation of what is a microservice and how they are connected. Amazing. So uh, thank you, Kostis. Now, if if you've noticed, uh, the Kostis showed a few methods, uh, one from the UI, one from adding an uh, annotation on application. But we also take into account that you have Argo CD running. You have hundreds, if not thousands, of applications. You want to start using our product, using our dashboards, associating products, and you don't want to start adding annotation to everything. So we we are aware of this, of this um, use case. And we want to try to make the process of adding and connecting your different applications into products much, much easier. And uh, as with everyone in this area, we're going to do this using AI. Um, so, and the idea is essentially that we will scan all your applications, identify similarities between them using naming convention, using the deploys resources, and provide you suggestions on what products you should have and what each and the association between each application to that product. Um, we'll give you this nice view showing you all the recommendations that we came up with, what environments each of these applications or each of these products exist on or deployed to, and allow you to simply approve these suggestions for a specific for an entire product or add or remove specific application. And again, the idea here is to get you from zero to 100 as fast as possible. Um, after we do this, this information is stored in our UI. It's not that. You can then, uh, with another click of a button, apply commits uh, to your application and just commit the annotations from our, our platform uh, to complete the process in a GitHub way or actually remove and add and connect different applications to different products very, very fast just to see the results and the different dashboard. So what we're trying to do here, and this will be coming uh, a bit later, so I can't demo it for you, is simplify the process and automate as much as possible without having everyone you to go through every each and every application and define the association. Um, now, Kosti's talked about promotion. Uh, let, let's let's talk about this. So we we've heard all the time how with GitOps promotion between environments is, is more complex than what we're used to. You're not just running a simple pipeline. You have you first need to commit, then you need to for, to wait for Argo CD for Argo CD to sync the, the the changes. You have to wait for the application to be healthy, and then you have to do a lot of that other actions. You can also essentially disable the 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 sync, the auto sync, and then run manual uh, uh, pipeline after the deployment, but it, it's a complex and something that it's not really solved. And everyone who starts using GitOps, one of the third, first thing they have to do is write their promotion pipelines. So we were looking how we can make this entire process much, much more simpler. And again, we have lots of experience. We have um, a huge number of customers that are doing this and we've learned a lot and we want to place this, all this information we have, uh, that you've seen some of it in Costis's amazing articles into our product. Uh, so that you can simply just run through the process, not have to think about this anymore. Uh, so we are starting actually by something that uh, Kostis is telling us, hey, don't do this, uh, but uh, a drag ops UI. Uh, I know it's kind of the anti GitOps, but we have, there are scenarios that we use this and it's not only. Uh, we have had great success with this with our Helm boards uh, dashboard, which allows you to define environments for Helm and promote uh, applications, uh, Helm applications with a, a drag and drop capability. So we have, we'll support this, but we'll also support uh, trigger-based and webhook-based promotions and API-based promotions. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to drag an application from one environment into another environment. We'll automatically detect each application's what, what, what's the source key repository and provide and, and perform uh, a Git operation to promote your changes in a GitOps way. So if we're looking here at, at the flow that we the code which is going to be used for promotion, so we start by a drag and drop either or an API uh, trigger mechanism, and then the next stage, since we're in GitOps, is actually performing a git commit or a pull request, like Kostis mentioned, to your uh, target application's GitOps repository. 
Um, this is especially useful if you want to integrate it with any approval flows that you already have uh, in, in, in GitHub or any other software in you know, a solution. And, or, or you just want to quickly do a commit and that's it. Everything, again, is automated, easy to do rollback. Um, but after that, that's only the beginning of the promotion stage. After that, we actually want to start more sophisticated, um, allow you to, to build out a more sophisticated pipeline of what happens once you've actually done this first commit. So we are leveraging our workflows. Uh, if you're familiar with Codefish, we already have our workflows built into the product, and we're going to leverage that even further for our promotion workflows. Um, and, and here's an example of uh, a very simple promotion workflow that you that you can run. So let's assume that application is currently uh, has auto sync turned on, although we do recommend to have auto sync turned on. The first step can be actually a sync. Uh, once that's done, wait for the application to become healthy. Everything should be synced. Um, and then you can start running testing on this application. Make sure that everything was done appropriately, that the version is correct, uh, there's no issues. And let's assume that you've done all your testing steps. Everything is green, everything is, is working perfectly. The next action is, hey, let's notify the developer that in the in Slack that their changes that they just uh, deployed are actually in the testing environment or in the production environment, and you can go check it and see where it is. Um, this is a, a very, very simple example. We are going to build into the product uh, a few um, workflow promotion workflow templates and examples, showing our best practices and suggesting we can for different scenarios. But other than that, we already have and we're building in more and more workflows and workflow templates into Argo Hub, our marketplace where you can and you yourself can add more and more steps and make sure that you everyone has the tooling they need either to do the stack notifications, the team notifications, or, or or whatever. Uh, run any testing suite that you that you need. So we're building out this marketplace for everyone, an open source marketplace where everyone can create more steps that are used for our promotion workflows. Um, in addition, obviously, you we can we don't want to force you to use our workflows if you're not uh, eager to do that. So we'll also have external CI tool uh, steps. So once you use the commit or the pull request, you'll be able to trigger any external CI tools such as Argo workflows, uh, Jenkins, and actually also you leverage our Codefish pipelines. Um, so if so, the first stage, and this is kind of preview of what happens once you trigger a commit, the user will actually see this uh, screen where we show them the exact diff, what is actually going to be committed to the target application. In this scenario, we allow the user to choose a pull request. There's, and, and you can see the files that are changed. You're open, you do, you do the commit, you'll do the pull request. You'll choose the workflow that you're running, the specific version, and voila, everything is, is set to go. Now, um, we talked about promotion. And, and if you look here, how, OK, so we actually, the only diff here is the app version. But we don't want to look, we didn't want to only to solve uh, pretty easy and simple and naive uh, uh, scenarios. We've had enough experience with enterprise customers, large customers that have very, very complex setups and, and, and configure, different configurations across different environments that they want, that they don't want to promote, some configurations that occasionally you do want to promote between environments, the artifacts that you want to promote. And, and uh, again, the same. Uh, um, uh, concept comes up again, you ask 100 people what you need to promote between environments, you'll get 100 different answers. So this is where we wanted to, to allow um, flexibility and customization in Codefish while still providing some best practices and, and, and templates, which is essentially this is our, our, our mantra here at Codefish. So this configuration file is something that you can attach to uh, use for one or more applications. Uh, we have here a, a selector to select which products and which applications you actually want this to apply to. And then you'll be able to choose here um, what files you want to monitor and what JSON paths you want to promote, you want to promote between the, the environments. You can decide to promote everything except the specific JSON path or just these JSON paths. You can provide multiple files, multiple temp paths, whatever scenario you want. The power essentially of a JSON path selector is, is quite infinite from our test. Um, so this should give you the flexibility to choose exactly what you want, you want to promote for various uh, complex scenarios. In addition to that, uh, we also, and, and Consys didn't show this in the demo, he showed it in the screenshots, but we show a version for each application. And this version is something that we believe that, that give you a, a very, very quick understanding, quick view of what is the difference, what is deployed in each environment. Um, 
And again, this version can sometimes change. With Helm, you're usually using an app version uh, property, but with Customize or with uh, Vanilla, uh, you might use something else. So again, we allow you to uh, dictate and or, or instruct us where to get that version and what to display for each and every part. So here are a few examples that, that we've kind of whipped up uh, uh, for the configuration file. With Helm, again, we're, we're looking at uh, the chart YAML, we're looking at the dependencies, we're looking at the values, the requirements, changes here, we're removing the artifacts. With Customize, essentially the options are endless. So here's an example of just looking at a specific template on a specific overlay and looking at the JSON path and cropping the images. And again, with just the vanilla Kubernetes deployments, uh, you're looking at a, a backend YAML and you're looking at a specific uh, container spec and essentially another YAML for, for the front end. Um, so, so this is uh, these are the examples. Again, this is the idea here was to be very, very flexible in how we allow you to, to control what and give you the ability to control exactly what's being promoted and what's not being promoted to make this a very powerful and enterprise grade solution. And Idan, can I just add, I mean, I think this is one of my favorite things about this is that this this spec here is essentially ambivalent about what kind of config management plug tools you're using. So the Helm, the customized plain, plain Kubernetes, at the end of the day, if it can be selected off of YAML or JSON paths, then we're pretty much there. So if there's some specialized tool that you have internally that you're using to manage your manifests, as long as it's meeting those requirements, it's going to work out of the box. Um, so it really is any kind of config management tooling you're using, because all we're really doing is looking at and understanding the paths of the manifests in order to update the configuration. Exactly. Perfect. And uh, I'll actually jump back a few slides because there's something that I'm not sure that everyone has noticed and actually didn't mention, but in this example, you'll see that I actually dragged from development to testing. As I mentioned before, you can do a rollback. You can move from testing to development. And, and this is a big ad with Codefresh's unique uh, runtime architecture. We're actually doing promotion across different Argo CD environment, Argo CD instances. So each environment here doesn't have to be the same Argo CD with different clusters connected to one Argo CD. These can be 10, 20, 30 different Argo CD instances. We don't care. We manage everything is agnostic to us. And you can create deployment models across multiple Argo CDs, start by deploying to uh, various development clusters in one Argo City, and then start moving between different instances in additional Argo City. And with our views, everything is unified into one place so you get all the information uh, at a glance. Uh, okay, so, so back here. So, so this is the promotion. Um, now, as I said, we, we have, Kostis also talked about it a bit when you have environment types. So, what when you start using the product, what promotion do you use? What workflow do you use? How do you configure this? So we wanted to to give a very, very um, easy way for you to control exactly how you're doing promotion. And we're doing this with promotion policies. And essentially what that means is that you can define a policy that suits you uh, based on different environments, different based on different products and uh, uh, different attributes of these entities. So I, I put together a few examples here that we can, that can really show the panel. So if I want to say, hey, I have a bunch of environments. Some of them are, are defined as non-production. Some of them are production. Anytime you promote into a, a production level environment, do a pull request. You can do a commit. This is dictated by the policy. The user will not be able to, to just commit the changes there. This has to go through approval. And after that, we have a set of testing uh, workflows that need to be run to make sure that this uh, everything is passed and this is production ready. So you can define that, that policy. You can provide another policy. Okay, but for an environment that's called sandbox, we can actually do a commit and we can skip some of the tests. Um, this is for another scenario. And again, you can choose for a product. So I have a product UI. The action, I'll, I'll, I'll use the default action based on what other, other policies exist, but I will run the full E2E suite of checks. Um, so this uh, essentially is here to give you the power to, again, with Argo CD, we're talking about uh, scale of application becomes really, really large thousand applications. We don't want to have to force you to define a specific promotion rule between each and every application, each and every environment. That's just not scalable. So with these policies, you can actually build out a set of rules that control exactly what you do across different teams, different environments, different products. Um, 
Again, obviously we can, this starts from the top level, but you can actually create a very, very specific group. This product, this environment, what's the workflow and what the action can do. So again, uh, opinionated, flexible and customizable. That, that's uh, what we do when we build these features. Something else that I love about this approach is it's very scalable, right? So if I have hundreds of production environments, I can essentially create one policy for all of them, or I can create, you know, bespoke specialized policies. Um, and uh, I believe I, can I, uh, Dan, here's a question actually from, from some of the chat. Um, can I stack policies? Like, so I, can I have something that's all for production and then something that's specific to one environment and both policies would be applied? Exactly. So, so we essentially a policy can um, either apply both an action and a workflow, or either of them, and they're ordered in a, in a sense so that you can actually stack and order them. So you can have a general rule and then more specific rules based on the so based on the order that you apply the rules. And again, this is we're still building this. We're going to add features. One item that has has come up and, and we're thinking about is defining soap tests. How many how much long does something have to be in environments? Or if you have uh, Black Friday and says, hey, we have an event, Sync on Environments. We did a code freeze today, so the production is still up and running. No one no one uh, um, promotes the production today. That's something that you can easily apply with these promotion rules. Well, and, and someone was just saying uh, in the Q&A, like, oh, well, can I have like a manual approval, you know, that needs to go forth for environment? So I could actually say for all my production environments, this production workflow needs to run. And that workflow includes specific approvals that would need to be met in order for it to continue. So I can mix and match this stuff to get kind of anywhere I want to go. Yeah. And we did mention that the actions start with a pull request and commit, but we actually do plan to add hooks that you can actually trigger before those actions themselves. And if you want to connect it to any other tooling like ServiceNow and such before you actually trigger the promotion, that's also possible. Um, it should be, and we are building something very, very flexible and powerful here. Um, so let's continue on. Uh, so, so these are the, what I've talked about now are things that are very, very, uh, are going to be here very, very soon this quarter, but we are looking a bit further into the future the next one, two quarters. Uh, I don't want to kind of promise anything. And, and, and let me show you what we've been working on and what, what's coming next. So, um, we talked about a lot about, Hey, what's deployed to each environment. And we want to make that very, very clear to you because that's essentially when there's a problem, something is was working on pre-prod, but it's not working in production, you're gonna ask yourself why? And the first question you're gonna ask, what's the difference? What changed? Well, why is it working here and not there? And you wanna understand what's the differences between these two environments. And that's something that we're going to, uh, we've started also with the first version that is already uh, as part of the product is actually showing you the difference of each dependency, each uh, service application, what are the different versions and what the, what, what's in each environment. And you can add multiple environments and compare them. Uh, but we're also going to add you a uh, diff view for the YAMLs and the values files and even the resources themselves. So you can identify, hey, production has doesn't have enough memory and CPU uh, for, for this new version. Then you can expand it and scale that up. So understanding exactly what's in each environment and what's the difference between the environments is key to us. And that's something that we're working on adding to the product. Um, and we, we talked a lot about, and Costis showed you looking at, at applications from uh, the environment standpoint. So looking at all your environments and seeing what applications deployed there, or you can go into a specific product, understand what's the differences between this specific product, but you also want to go and see, hey, this, this image, we have our, our CF API, and actually what version of this image is deployed across each and every environment. So with these new entities that we have, it actually makes all our current uh, dashboards and screens and entities in the system much, much more powerful. So we can see, hey, development has this version, but pre and then it was deployed to testing for this version and pre-prod and then, and everything is traceable back to actually the CI that uh, built this image and who did the commits and, and who initiated this and everything is tied back to our system. So we're actually giving you and different personas and different use cases, the exact view that you need uh, to understand what's going on and, and, and the history of it. Um, Finally, and, and this was mentioned uh, when we're talking about microservices and, and more sophisticated, essentially, uh, promotion models is how do we build out an orchestration across multiple environments? So, so we talked about deploying from one environment to another, and you can actually daisy chain the promotion pipelines and build something, but we want to also 
provide something more manageable and scalable to, to manage the motion between multiple environments and, and visualize the, the flow that you're using for each and every product and deploy to multiple uh, regions at the same time. So this is something that we are working on. Uh, it's in the very early stages, but something we have in mind and will be part of the product pretty soon. And finally, um, as we scale and we man, not everyone wants to see all the environments now and everyone wants to see all the products. Um, larger teams have different uh, separation of concerns. Um, and with that, we're also gonna add the ability to save and share filters uh, for, for both their dashboards. So you can actually control what each team is looking is seeing, not only based on our permission model that, uh, and our back rules that allow you to, to see what and to limit the operation of each team member, but also for now, you just wanna focus on this environment. So we'll create a view that focuses on a set of environments and another view for another team member or for yourself. It's focusing on a different set of environments for specific use cases. So again, this is coming in the future, not part of the product as of right now. Um, that's it for now. Um, Dan, should we kind of stop for questions or, or let's show this uh, small video? Yeah, let's let's pause there for just a moment and um, let's let's just go ahead and invite you all to uh, take a moment and um, add additional questions. Um, and uh, we're going to show you. Yeah, I think while 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 you're writing your questions down, um, I'm going to show you just a brief video. Of um, so let me see ah, whoa, sorry. Mm -hmm. So let me let me share. There we go. There you go, Danny. Share, yeah. Sorry, and make sure my sound is on. Okay, here we go. Argo CD is a powerful foundation for software delivery with GitOps, keeping software changes in sync. But how do those changes fit into the application lifecycle across environments? Teams become overwhelmed trying to follow the flow of many applications along with their tickets and pull requests. CodeFresh solves this by using AI to intelligently create product entities that track and scale across Argo CD applications and environments. Our environments dashboard tames the previously untraceable releases across numerous clusters and Argo CD instances. For each product, users can see the latest version in each environment and trace back to the commits and pipelines that deployed it. The product dashboard refines the focus to a single product, providing critical live insights, along with Git and project management information. Now, promoting is as easy as dragging and dropping across to automatically commit changes. Deploy easy with CodeFresh. So um, something that I was thinking about as I was playing was that for, for users that are using, sorry, for those of you that are using um, CodeFresh today, you're very familiar with this concept of how we bring together the applications and the configuration. Typically with GitOps uh, applications, you have kind of your GitOps repo and, and the changes are just configuration change, right? It's like, I'm moving from tag one to tag two, right? For an image. But CodeFresh also actually analyzes those images and gets their commit information, their PRs, their JIRA tickets. So when you update, um, you know, when you update your application, it's not just the configuration Git, it's also the application level Git that is usually kept separate that is also brought into that dashboard. It's just something that's that's really cool and, and interesting. So um, Kostas, uh, let's bring you back on. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of you are going to be joining us at KubeCon next week, and um, you'll be able to come and and play with some of this stuff in our booth. Um, if you're if you're a, a current customer, reach out to your customer uh, representative to ask for um, ask ask for access. If you're uh, new and you want to get early access, contact our sales team and and uh, schedule a demo, and they'll be happy to help you. But let's take a couple of these questions. Um, so, uh, NG asked, uh, very early on, Hey, is this going to be open source? Is our environments open source? Is this going to be contributed? I see that question. Um, quite a few people asking that. So CodeFresh is open core, right? So we we're, we're built on Argo CD. Um, the features that we're showing you today are all going to be available in our enterprise platform in CodeFresh. Now, uh, we do have a free tier available for people to use that. Um, and of course, we have enterprise plans as well. So this is definitely anybody can go and use this. 
um, uh, once it's been enabled on your account. Um, and if you want to join early access on some of this stuff, um, you can do that. Um, another question we have, Edan, is when is when are environments going to be available to customers? So we're going to launch uh, a beta probably in the next month or so. Um, and uh, and you can reach out to customer success uh, to join the beta. And um, shortly after, depending on how the beta goes, and uh, uh, we'll release a GA. But we want to release a quality product, so we're going to... Um, make sure that everything is working as expected. Yeah, and a lot of um, a lot of the customers who joined, you're aware that like we've been showing you different aspects of this for a while. Um, and obviously uh, we're gonna be demoing it. Uh, you know, Costas gave a live demo of what's working today. Um, and we're gonna be demoing at KubeCon a few more things than that. Uh, and um, yeah, so so if you're interested in, in getting early access to this stuff and starting to play with it, reach out, you know, get on that list and and uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll be love to get your, um, early opinion of it as we release it over the coming, you know. Exactly. So I, I want to reiterate that. So um, we want your feedback, uh, and and that's very important to us because we want to make sure that this solves your solution. And if there's anything that you notice that we can improve about it, so that that's important to us. Uh, this is a uh, very very big item for us. So we're and as you can see, we're excited about it. Um, so uh, one of the questions that we've seen um, a couple people ask as well is. How does this play with application sets? Um, does it also play well with progressive delivery? And uh, I think Luke is also asking about a specific feature of application set progressive syncs, which allows you to, to set up um, basically promotion plans across environments. Uh, so that's kind of three questions in one, but maybe we can start with application sets. Um, so application sets, if you want a group application and you're leveraging application sets, um, there's a variety of options. You can actually have a matrix where you have one application set or the same application set that deploys multiple microservices application and for, for different environments. So just add to your templates the, the annotation that you need and we'll generate based on that different products. Everything is managed from Git and that's actually the easiest way to, to, to approach this. Uh, just one place and, and you're all there. Yeah. I, then, I want to add something yeah, on this because it's very popular. So application sets, if you remember I talked uh, before, they started as a way to generate applications. So the original idea is uh, I, I have a thousand applications. I don't want to write the YAML for a thousand applications. I want to generate a thousand applications. So this is what, what was happening during build time. Now, once you deploy those thousand applications, maybe they are related, maybe they are not related. So. You know, if I have an application set and it installs uh, Nginx, uh, Cert Manager, Seal Secrets in my cluster, they are not related in any way. Like I'm not going to promote them or do stuff. I think the runtime um, annotation that we add is much simpler and it also goes into the uh, runtime information. Like your application is live and you want when it's live to understand if it's related to other. You can connect the two. Like if you have, you know, your application set template and you say, yes, my applications are connected, you can add the annotation and do it there. So I think the way it works right now is really flexible and will cover you know, both customers that think that application set creates interrelated applications and those that use application set just as a generator. Yeah. Yeah, and um, going on to the progressive delivery aspect, hey, if I'm using a Canary release or a blue-green deployment, this isn't going to affect that. I mean, it would show up Exactly, you know those those application tiles that we see in the environment view, those are pulled from the application status. So if, if something is stalled, it's going to show as stalled right in that view, and it's going to work exactly the same. Um, so it's going to it's going to play very nicely, right? I mean, I don't think there's anything else to add on that. Is there? No. No. Uh, you you can actually tie in the progression and testing of the promotion pipeline based on uh, the progressive delivery of Argo rollout. So you can actually do sophisticated. Uh, scenarios. If you've actually rolled back the application, you can continue your pipeline and actually run and roll back everything else from there. So uh, it does give you a few more option capabilities and and, and looking and with that in mind, just having those uh, promotion workflows available. Yeah. Um, and then the last part of Luke's question was, uh, what about application sets progressive sync? So for those that aren't aware, there is um, with that within application sets. There is a, a newer feature that allows you to basically set up a promotion plan to say roll out to 
uh, application sets, this grouping, and then that grouping, you can have some tests and things like that that are part of it. Um, this should play well with the environments feature because CodeFresh's environments feature is essentially passed through. I mean, it's aware of which components should be updated in which Git repositories. And then it's reflecting in the dashboard, the real-time status. So if you're using um, progressive sync with uh, application sets, I expect that it would show up um, exactly the same. I mean, I, I think it would it would add that same level of information. So I don't think there would be any, any challenge there. Um, let's see, uh, we can do one or two more questions and then we're gonna move on to uh, the customer um, Q&A. Um, so, uh, one of the can I add something on the last question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so, if I remember correctly, with progressive sync, uh, there isn't like any intermediate step. Like you deploy to one environment, and then three minutes late, three minutes later, it goes to the next. But maybe you're going to do some testing in between. So, the solution that we've shown here with the promotion uh, pipeline allows you to define also some testing where you say, "Okay, I deploy to staging. Now run some smoke tests in staging, and then." promote to production. And if I remember correctly, this is not supported natively by uh, Progressive Sync. No, it is not. That's correct. Uh, with Progressive Sync, it, you, you don't get that kind of um, health check, uh, customization or manual approval or any of those kinds of things. So that would be all stuff that would be supported with this kind of flow. Um, I view them as, as pretty complementary. Um, uh, it'll be interesting as we roll out the features specific to managing um, like regional changes and, and orchestrating changes across multiple environments at the same time to see how those play well together. Um, someone had asked, uh, what about skipping environment promotions? Uh, maybe I have a hot fix and I wanna skip the normal flow to address a critical issue. Can I drag from dev to prod? Um, and I think maybe part of that question is, can I have a specific policy for that kind of hot fix? So um, right now you can actually do, you can drag from any environment to any environment. Um, we are working on, as then I mentioned earlier, the orchestration of deploying to multiple environments and the policies around that. Uh, so that's coming now um, in the future. But for now, yeah, uh, we don't have any limitations right now on, on the order of promotion. Cool, perfect. All right, uh, so with that, Kostas, Idan, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, why don't you uh, stick around and uh, I'm gonna bring, uh, let's invite um, Victor up. So um, for those of you that don't know uh, Victor, Victor is a senior director of DevOps at um, Viva and uh, has been using CodeFresh GitOps for quite some time. Uh, and uh, was also part of our uh, early group where we were uh, showing these environmental features to him uh, and getting his feedback. So um, Victor, maybe you can start off by just uh, sharing, maybe just briefly, what were you guys doing before you adopted CodeFresh GitOps? And then what was the adoption process like? Oh, that's a good question. So um, we, we actually went really deep into our goal at the very beginning. So uh, we were able to build out some environments and we, uh, during my investigation process, I tried to figure out what would be the easiest way. We had to get up and running very quickly. I had a dev team already building applications and I wanted to build out an environment. So we went and decided to go with GitOps. That would be the easiest thing to, to go with. And Argo was the solution. So we built out a workflow and we started deploying. We were able to get up and out in, in less than a month. And, and that was with the basic knowledge of, of Argo uh, several years ago. So getting up and out and getting released was something uh, really good that we were able to do to just start releasing all these applications. And then we've just been expanding from there. So now we have dozens of environments and tens of dozens of, of um, namespaces and uh, different environment groups and developers all using custom applications. So this feature specifically was one of the ones I was extremely excited for. Nice. Yeah, and uh, we didn't we didn't talk a ton about managing like clusters and Argo CD instances. Um, for for people that haven't used CodeFresh before, that's a feature that you would probably love to have because um, it does keep all of your environments together. All of them are Git managed. 
um, the orchestration of those, the upgrades for them. If there's security vulnerabilities, it's flagged. Um, and you can update those uh, through the CodeFresh platform and it'll show which clusters are connected to which instances. So that's probably something that um, in your case, you know, how many how many Argo instances or how many GitOps runtimes uh, are you guys actually running? So we have, uh, so you could imagine we have our development environments, we have QA, staging, pre-prods, productions. So you can imagine at, at least 10 different uh, environments, each one of those manage their own Argos. Mm. Um, so we have each one of them managing their own Argos. We have CodeFresh uh, managing on top of everything. And we use that flow across the entire workflow. But now GitOps has made it so easy for us to just build out new environments. So now we have developers being able to build on the fly full end-to-end -end environments for themselves. Right. So one of the yeah. major issues that we've had to face was how do we first, how do we keep track of all these environments? Everything is is GitOps, everything is infrastructure as code inside Git. But at the end of the day, if we have dozens of environments, um, keeping track of all of them, making sure they're all in sync and things that are not being uh, used anymore, uh, there wasn't a, a centralized visual pay, place to kind of visualize that entirely. And that's what, you know, this environments thing would, would help us solve. Yeah, it, it is interesting. You know, a lot of people, when they just start getting going with the community version of Argo CD, they they like to use one instance of Argo CD and they connect prod and dev and staging to that. And um, you guys got out of that trap early on. And, and I, I say trap because I actually do think that there is some danger in keeping... Um, a single Argo instance to manage production and dev, because if you have some kind of, uh, you know, general Argo CD is pretty good at not allowing, uh, you know, a denial of service runaway process. But if you, let's just call it a noisy neighbor problem of maybe something is going on in dev, you don't want that to maybe stop you from deploying to production. So using multiple instances is safer. Most people don't do it because it's not convenient. But as you pointed out, that's something that with code fresh hey i see it all in one dashboard it doesn't really matter to me that i'm running multiple argo instances behind the scenes i don't really have to any you know overhead to that and it doesn't take any cognitive load off of my users because it is just one view one dashboard for all of it so i can see everything that's going on it doesn't matter where it's happening no absolutely i we treat argo like it's a one it's it's just another app all right, so yeah. if I wanted to upgrade Argo in a development environment because we have some new features we want to implement or, or workflows or something else that we want to try, it is just another workflow that we could also implement and manage all the way through into production. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk for a moment about workflows. Um, so, uh, you know, CodeFresh, we've got the built-in CICD for building our containers and our images, doing our testing. We've got built-in, um, you know, Argo workflows. And um, some people were asking about um, essentially how CodeFresh uh, handles um, that flow and bringing it together. Was that a, a pretty important feature for you guys to have exposure from pipelines in those, you know, deployment timeline and dashboards? Oh, absolutely. Um, which the integration that you're talking about now would even uh, better our workflow. If you could imagine, we have dozens of developers uh, working on the environments. They then uh, work their way up to a release. We have QA, which is another environment, test and validate. Then we go into pre-prod and into production. And in the middle of those flows, we have a test that we need to implement. So before we go into production, we have a dry run pre-prod environment where we have to test everything and make sure everything is working before we promote into production. And within that flow, we integrate many pipelines. So mm. all the pipelines work. Um, we use it to connect to Git and commit the version. We use customize on a lot of things for a lot of patching and work our way all the way into production. But now with this environment flow, integrating a, you know, being able to move one of those applications into a different environment and then auto running a flow, which will integrate a pipeline or uh, some type of checks and then get that into production simplifies the flow even more for us. 
Did did you ever use our um our helm boards before yeah. GitOps? I don't know. You you did use those. Okay, so you recognize that. We pattern. did. So I, yeah, I do recognize the flow, which is really awesome because it was very easy to go uh, move back and forth. But we moved away from Helm to customize really early on, yeah. uh, just because of the the ability to do all the patches. So uh, just made us open up um, well, everything that we could do with Argo. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm uh, I, I agree with you on that one. That's my my personal fan. So, um, we probably only have time for maybe one or two more questions. But um, uh, and audience, feel free to to shout out in the chat or or whatever um, if you have a question. But um, I did want to ask you from what we've shown today, and and you've seen earlier versions of some of the designs and things like that. Um, is there an aspect of this that you think is going to be the most impactful for your team? Is there a specific feature or flow that stands out as like, oh, that's going to make us more productive or that's going to help us reduce downtime? Or um, I was just wondering if maybe you have a, a kind of a favorite aspect that you would call out that you're most excited for. Uh, honestly, uh, each one of these things I was extremely excited for, and it's been asked from the developers. It's not an ask from an ops team or DevOps or mm. trying to figure it out is uh, how do we visualize all of the versions, how do we compare versions? So some of the features that you're building later on in the future where you have different environments where we have the versions and compare, when there is an issue, how can I determine why this environment worked versus the other environment? Um, at the end of the day, they're all just dockers, but understanding what versions of where and where we got hot fixes are, are very important. So that visualization from a usability perspective just makes life very simple and very intuitive compared to configurations. Yeah. And yeah. Like I mean, I, I feel that because uh, with with the current um, views, you know, the GitOps views, uh, the one scenario that I get, like I'll, I'll click and go back to Git from that dashboard sometimes because I'm looking specifically at comparing those environments um, and to have that kind of baked in, that's something that I'm very excited for as well, to be able to just diff those really quickly and, and have an understanding of, oh, these diffs are specific to the environment. These diffs are meant to be promoted. Uh, and that can help, you know, that differentiation and having that clarity, um, can, can help, you know, make it clear why maybe something is, is behaving in a way that's unexpected. So you can resolve it quickly. That's 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 awesome. So I I, I agree a hundred percent. Now uh, maybe a final question. Um, of all the things that we showed today, is there anything that's maybe on your bucket that wasn't mentioned that you're like, oh, it would be really cool if this was part of it. Uh, so a lot of the things that you were uh, you showed today is things that we were trying to just build internally uh, because we needed it. Uh, I think one of the things that we're looking in, we have tons of environments. We're able to build uh, dedicated flows on demand, but understanding why that environment, what is that environment and why that does that environment exist? So having additional annotations on the mm -hmm. environments might be something that I would be very interested in, being okay. able to see what environment is and understand that this is a QA environment for this feature set, or this is... Uh, specifically testing load load testing uh, without having to go into the applications, I think would be very interesting. Hey Dan, what do you think? So something so so something that we did add and we kind of added it um, in Hebrew. There's a term that it's a preparation for an AC. Uh, so it's something that you put in the house. You're not sure if you're going to have AC, but it's worth doing it while you're building the house. So we, you actually can ta you add tags to environments and products and. And we didn't know exactly what we we're going to use that, but we were thinking, hey, if you're generating inferior environments and you have a pipeline that creates an environment, you can't really set it up beforehand. So let's create views based on these tags, but you can also just tag these environments with the feature uh, for the, the JIRA ticket of that environment. And then you can understand better why this environment was created and, and associated back. So I think that's a very, very cool use case for that. And actually it's already there, we just need to, yeah. That sounds yeah. awesome. Uh, having all these additional tags, if once you go directly into GitOps and you want to GitOps everything, um, adding those annotations and being able to see those annotations visually somewhere else, 
Uh, even if I was to link a, a Grafana dashboard inside an annotation, yeah. be able to visualize that somewhere else. Those are exciting things to, to implement and be able for a developer to be able to see very easily kind of move through their environments. Yeah, great comment. Okay, perfect. Well, it sounds like we're we're at least uh, part of the way there. I think uh, uh, when this comes out, um, we'll have to see if we're able to get that full level that you're looking for. But with that, uh, Victor, uh, really appreciate you coming on and sharing your experience from Viva and how your team has been so successful with all, a lot of this tooling. Um, we're excited to get, get it into your hands and everybody else's hands. And a uh, big thank you to Dan, of course, for presenting all of that. Coast is for the presentation. Um, and then in the in the Q and A, uh, big thank you to um, to Francisco, to Taylor, to Laurent, to Dustin, all the people that have been monitoring that chat and going back and forth and helping answer questions. We're gonna leave that chat open for a few minutes. Um, if you have any additional questions, get those done. Uh, of course, we're looking forward to showing this off at KubeCon next week for all of those. Uh, all of you that will be meeting us in Chicago, um, we'll be there, we'll be on site and excited to share that. And then, uh, of course, you know, contact your, your customer success person, contact our sales team, just go to codefresh.io, you can click schedule demo and um, get a demo of some of this stuff and start actually, you know, get on the list for early access so you can get, use, uh, get using it. Um, and uh, we'll see you at KubeCon. Thanks, everybody.